all this is about working on the, you know, the chart is just, it was flawed, it wasn't user friendly, and that's what this is all about, is trying to make something that makes sense, that's usable, that's functional, that's applicable, and that's certainly more user friendly than what we've had in the past. So. Yeah, I guess I worry about phrases like that, um, user-friendly, applicable, uh, makes sense, uh, because what I see happening is these broad brush strokes attempting to simplify everything. And yet I wonder if you've given serious consideration to some of the consequences of this kind of methodology. Um, I mean, things like this tend to bite back. I mean, what you're doing is sort of in the spirit of high modernism. Um, some areas are already in a postmodern world. But, um, you know, just from my perspective, living on Round Hill Road, I don't understand why we are in URC. Uh, this is not an area that people can easily walk back up the hill from being downtown. And um, you know, the consequences that I am concerned about are consequences to the older houses in Northampton. And have you really thought about what this will do? I don't know if any of you are architects or landscape architects, uh, but when you come up with these design standards, <coughs> are you thinking about more than just numbers? Are you thinking, for example, can you stand in a neighborhood and look up and see the sky or trees, or will you only see rooftops? Um, I foresee many areas trying to become historic districts, um, even though we should not um, you know, be a mausoleum and protect and try to preserve everything. Um, there are some buildings that really do need to be protected, neighborhoods that need to be protected. And I'm just concerned that um, in doing these standards, you don't have someone who is um, questioning and saying, well, what are the consequences? But just going ahead. I do agree that in making the rationale for what you're doing, you do have to make it stronger how is this related to sustainable Northampton? Um, I don't think you've really made the case. I mean, as I see it, and, and if you recall back in those meetings in October, there was an emphasis on affordable housing, which seems to have vanished. Um, but it's all about you know filling in those cadastral maps and getting as much revenue as possible. I mean, you have not persuaded me that anything else is going on. So I do ask you to um, be aware of unintended consequences. They are out there, and they will bite you. Thank you. Next meeting relative to this. <coughs> there will be something in the next, not a long time to put yeah. something. I can't guarantee anything. But I, I mean, my goal is to keep pushing, push a little bit more, a little bit more. And now that we're moving, people are back from their Christmas holiday. So <laughs> we have <laughs> ability. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have students again. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then that said, moving forward next up is the Glasby Park. Yep. So I think I sent you that, right? The mm -hmm. So for you yeah. and Devin, jump in if you want to provide any more information. But um, basically, uh, Department of Public Works and Board of Public Works has submitted a preliminary application to the Community Preservation Committee to seek funding for um, detailed design um, for the Reconstruction, um, redesign, use of the Park um, to help the park. 
And now, I mean, a lot of it, so just going back um, um, briefly in history, back in 2009, I guess this memo is dated actually even earlier, 2007, 2008, there had been a committee, one committee established by Board of Public Works to, um, with lots of public input on what things um, people were interested in seeing take place in Pulaski Park. How could Pulaski Park be enhanced? How could it be improved um, for the future? And so um, they did all this work. They finally, they ended up hire, um, they did a design competition. And this um, firm, um, Steve Simpson, Stephen Simpson Associates, won the design competition. And then everything sort of stopped because there was no funding. So there was a little bit of feedback, I think, after that. Um, but there was no funding. And then at the time, Community Preservation Act didn't allow for um, those monies to be used to um, renovate or put into any um, park that was not originally purchased by CP, um, C or CPA funds. And then that legislation just changed last year so that now the CPA funds can be used for acquisition or it can also be used for uh, maintenance um, and upgrades to existing facilities that weren't previously purchased through the <coughs> process. So now there's this, uh, there's this new revenue mechanism by which the city can move forward on implementing the design, redesign and reconstruction and enhancement. That in context of the hotel, though, yeah. that, didn't, that was what had us doing, thinking about this, wasn't it? About <coughs> those two together for us? Yeah, um, so there was a hotel project, and then as part of the hotel, um, the hotel and the city were having conversations about <coughs> the meet part of the hotel, and there was going to be an additional park space added, essentially, when the hotel was built, 30 feet or something, the park was going to extend. And so, it was um, going to extend because the hotel people were going to buy property <coughs> and permit it to extend? Um, because of the gap, essentially, between the edge of the steep hill and where the building would go in order to, you know, make those two pieces and come together. And whose property is that? The city, well, it was, it's all city property. The city, property. The okay. city had, um, yes, um, accepted an offer by the hotel to purchase the property for the purposes of building the hotel. Mm -hmm. So then that, um, through that discussion, then generated the whole conversation about what to do with the rest of the park. And um, and so then there was this process that started sort of partway through the permitting process for the hotel. Um, and that's dead. The hotel the is dead. But ultimately, <laughs> you know, the city council might bring up um, the sale of that uh, you know, parking lot, lot again. They just have to try to do it. And we're in our first season of the rewritten CPA statute. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, Board of Public Works is, as part of its application, wants, um, would like to get letters of support from as many public bodies, private bodies for that matter, um, for their application. And I think it, you know, I had a conversation with Jim um, uh, Larilla at DPW about how it made sense, I think, for Planning Board to weigh in and the Central Coast Architecture Committee. Um, and particularly as it relates to, you know, you guys have been looking more at the infrastructure and the street, um, um, sort of safer street standards for Main Street and then City Hall in front of City Hall and that piece. And I think the park has always sort of been this um, other aspect of the entire downtown you know, streetscape that hasn't really been addressed. So I think um, you know, I think that that may, would make sense for you to comment, or at least you know, if you guys are willing or interested in writing a letter of support or signing on to a letter of support. And what would the letter of what would we be supporting? Just a continuation of the process that that started with all out or Can I see Oh yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. So basically, you would be support. It would be a letter of support for the city to move forward on renovation of Pulaski Park. And so there. Or 
the winning design or? Yeah, the winning design is the one that's going to move forward. They just need to go to construction line. So basically, they've had this all this public process that went into selecting their design team based on this design competition. And then it stopped because there was no money to take it the next step. So now this is the next step. They didn't just select the design. They didn't select the design team based on, well, they selected the design team based on the design that was submitted. Yes. But the design that's submitted is the one that's going to go forward. Yes. That's not going to right. start. Well, they're not going to start over with, with, you know, they talk about these you know, seven or eight or ten you know, talking points about what's important. Is that all going to be thrown back in the mix and, and, and the architect's going to come out with a new design? That I don't think, my sense is it's not going to be substantially di different. So they're going to take, after the design team was selected, there was another round of comments. And this memo that I also emailed to you of March 2009 mm -hmm. was basically the recommendations after the design team was selected about further consideration. So there will be some more stuff that gets put into the construction design, but ultimately it's this team and it's their concept that one, that they're going to move forward on a more detailed design. And they're going after a grant for it. Are they going after a grant for the whole thing or are they doing it incrementally? Well, I think they're, this is just design, so it's not, I don't think it's construction uh, as far as I know. Let me just check. Um, email. One, one more recent thing that has happened is the fatality and the cost of all coming from the ground. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, there's been so much conversation about that, but we currently have a sidewalk that goes to the crosswalk, and there's a big debate in town as to whether the crosswalk needs to come out. But then you just still have people going down that sidewalk and getting into it. Right. So I think there's a whole traffic piece of this that's gonna mm -hmm. that, that has come up since this happened. And the more right. use yeah. is made of the park, the more mm -hmm. yeah. There's gonna have to be some changes because this was based on having a hotel behind it. That's a big, it's a massive change. Right, and it shows that the circulation you know, mm -hmm. shows dumping out onto the south. Street. Right, so I think actually the one thing would be how do you make a connection to the bike path in the back? But I think there's also has to be an assumption that there could be a building there at some point. Right. So they want to design with that in mind. Sure. Yeah, when, when the discussion about the <coughs> redoing Pulaski Park going on in the past few years, I've been quite concerned as, as a former downtown resident and as a former downtown businessman about the emphasis on performance centers. Seems like people want to be a place to show, up. They show movies, they have bands. There are hundreds and hundreds of families that live within 300 feet of Pulaski Park. And many of the time when they had a rock band there, it actually made stores on Upper Main Street unable to carry on business because it was so noisy. So, um, I mean, I don't, I don't like that aspect of the, uh, of the park.
but not now. Right, not right. now. So we have minutes to approve, but we don't have any minutes tonight. So uh, we'll push that off. So, so approved. Right, so those are approved. And others, unless you have something um, else to show. Wow, this could be a record for you. I know. So not, not for me. me. <laughs> Wait, we have to sit around for like an hour and waste the wine. No, no, no. <laughs> he suggested we could talk about changes to uh, merging GI and OI, and we chatted about it a little while, and it, we realized that it would probably take a little bit more discussion. Merging <laughs> what, if you don't mind? I'm sorry. General industrial zone with office industrial. They're very similar, but um, office industrial doesn't allow warehouses. Mm -hmm. 